How do you get on teacher TikTok? You keep posting videos yeah, you with us, post and you post them, and they're like gonna get things. Like, like, the, like, do they like, have to? They have to let you in. Like you can't just do it. Well, they, they like do like voiceover. No, you can just start the book. You just like you can teach them math. You can like show them like instead of posting YouTube videos, you can do TikTok videos as well. Okay, here we go. Graphing and observation. Everybody should have. I know you all have a ruler. I will bite. Can I go to the bathroom? Sure. Okay. So, if you recall, if you recall. At the very beginning, when we were doing functions, we had the input, right? X went in, we did something to it, out came the Y. Remember that awesome video you guys liked, Metamorphosis? No. With the chicken nuggets? No. Remember? Okay. So this is our rule here. So we have, we're going to start out by just, we're going to pick some X values. I'm going to highly recommend you use these. Unless you have a fraction in your rule. If you have a fraction in the rule, then I'll tell you what to do differently here. So now we're going to put our x value into this rule to find out our y value. So if I put negative 2 in for x, what will my y value be? Negative 5? Negative 3. Negative 1. Negative 7? Yeah? Negative 7. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 minus 3, negative 7. Right? If I put negative 1 in, I'm going to get negative 5. Because 2 times negative 1, negative 2, minus 3 is negative 5. If I put 0 in, I get negative 3. And probably you can see the pattern by now. Right? Um, oh, it's plus 2. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so all I did, Maddie, was I put this number that I chose for x right here. Oh, in the x. 2 times negative 2 minus 3. Oh. So you do that for you each pick, one? You pick the numbers? So if you're not given numbers, then yes, these are the ones I would suggest you use so you get a good idea of what the graph is going to look like. So, so, what, oh. so what this has just turned into now is my ordered pairs. Oh, yeah. But how did you know to, like... Add two. Um, because I after these first three, I saw the pattern. I'm adding two. And I know it's going to be a line. Like it's going to be a constant rate of change. right? So now I plot these points. I can't do the first one, so I'm going to go down here to the second one. And then I connect them. So I took this equation, that is my rule, made my values. So now we're going to talk about what is the slope and what is the y-intercept of this. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Why? Okay. Yes. Where is the negative 5 and negative 1 uh, on the left side, right? I go negative 1, negative 5. What? The x tells me to go oh. backward 1. This is my ordered pair. So I'm just plotting these points. Zero, negative three. But you can't graph negative, negative two, negative seven. Yeah. Yep, it doesn't show up on this graph. So I'm just going to only be able to plot the points of the ones that will fit on the graph. And that's okay, that happens. Well, we're going to talk about that. Okay. So my slope, where we talked about m is the slope, what is the slope for this line? Uh, yeah. Or 2, right? The y-intercept is this <laughs> special spot on the graph where the line crosses the y-axis. That's why it's called the y-intercept. Wherever my line crosses, the line that I created crosses the y-axis. That's my y-intercept. So somebody decided that that should be called b. I don't know why. But so what is the ordered pair for my y-intercept of this line? 
0, negative 3. So this is y-intercept, this is slope. So just leave it at that. We're going to move on to the next one. We're going to do the exact same process. Okay. All right. So we're going to use that same negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Because I was not given x values, I'm just going to pick some. And this is a good, you have some negatives and some positives. And that's what you need to be able to see what the graph is going to look like when you plot the points. What's hiding right here in front of this x? Negative. A 1. There's a secret 1 right there. Write yourself a note. So if I put negative 2 in for x, negative 1 times negative 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Right. Yep, because a negative times a negative makes a positive, so that's going to be a positive 2 plus 1. Okay, so this is a negative 1 times negative 2. Why would you do times negative 2? Because that's the x value I'm using. And so you'd have to multiply. Yep. Yeah. This is multiplication, right? So, so it's like here how I put the negative 2 here. 2 times negative 2. So the next one would be 2. So then this is going to be a 2, yeah, because negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, plus 1 is 2. Negative 1 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. And then you can probably see the pattern. So again, I've created my ordered pairs. I'm going to plot them. What is the slope of this line? Negative down one over one. Yeah. Negative one over one, or just negative one. What is my y-intercept? Where does the y the line cross the y-axis? Zero. Zero one. Yeah? All right, we're going to do another one. This is where we're going to choose different x-axis values because taking half of a number can get real ugly. We don't want any decimals. So what are the easiest numbers to take half of? Even. Evens, right? So I'm going to do negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. If my fraction had been 1 third, I would have done values that were multiples of 3. Negative 9, negative 6, negative 3. So when I divide by 3, I get a nice whole number. So what's 1 half of negative 6? Plus 2? Negative 1, right? So we were at negative 3, and then we add 2, so we get up to negative 1. Wait, are we dividing by half? Yeah, so half of negative 6 is negative 3, right? What's half of um, negative 4? Negative 2 plus 2 gives me 0. 
Half of negative 2 is negative 1, plus 2 is 1. And then you can see the pattern. So then we create our ordered pairs. I can't do negative 6. I guess I could right here. What is the slope of this line? 1 over 2. 1 half. What is my y-intercept? 2, 3. 2, 1. 2, 0. 0, 2, right? Because it goes through right here. Yeah, but it doesn't cross over. So this is where it intersects right here at this point. So that's going to be my y-intercept. Okay, once you have that written down, put your pens and pencils down. I want to show you guys something, but I need your eyes up at the screen. Well, any distractions? Okay. I'm going to just point to things. I'm not even going to say a word. I'm just going to point to things. So you guys are looking up at the screen. All eyes are on the screen. Okay, you guys ready? Is it, is it clicking for anybody? Yeah. Oh. Are you guys seeing what's happening? Okay. So what's my slope going to be here? And my y-intercept's going to be 0, negative 4. What? You see what just happened? So now we don't. Like now you can just skip to the graphing part. Okay, so just look up here to see how to graph it. So the way to make this graph without the table, first you plot the y-intercept. So I plot, I take this 0, negative 4, and I put my point there. And then I use the slope to plot two more points. My slope is one, I go, I rise one, run one, rise, run. And then I can make the line. You guys, who doesn't love a good shortcut? Yeah? Yay! Yay! You guys just found the slope and y-intercept from an equation and graphed it. Yeah. I'm getting into Harvard. Uh, you're, listen, this is definitely your foot in the door. Okay, turn the paper over. Okay, okay, go ahead. Oh, look at that. I'm going to end up on a, end up on a talk show. I'm good. Awesome. You're going to like be famous. I can't wait. I can't wait to be famous. I mean, in my mind, I'm already famous. So now everybody just catches up, right? Oh my gosh, she has 76. Oh my gosh, 76. She has 76. She has 46 followers. Wow. Nice. Ooh. With 25 likes.
listen, is all those math teachers out there going to be like, yep, yep, all the 8th grade math teachers. Okay, look, you see your Friday just got better, right? Now you have something to look at. That's because you guys keep watching it. <laughs> no, I've only watched it once. You have two shares in March. That's, like, good. That's, like, yeah. That's, like, really good. That's, like, really good. Like, they're going to be so cool. That just means more people are going to see it. Can't wait. Can't wait. Okay, guys, let's do this one. Slope. What is it? Two. Negative two. What's my y intercept? Zero, comma, three. Zero, three. So I plot it at my y intercept, and then I use my slope to fall two over one, fall two over one. Then I graph, I make the line. Yep, three points is good. Nope, we're going to stop right there. Actually, we're going to scoot down here to number nine. So we have something called the slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. This is going to haunt you for the next five years. Awesome. Promise. Great. It's going everywhere you're going. Y equals mx plus b. You're going to remember this moment. You're going to be like, dang it, she was right. It keeps following me. Okay. What part of the equation relates to the y-intercept? B. B. Wow, that's What part of the equation relates to the slope? M. M. Okay, we're not done yet. We have a little bit more to do. Thank you. I have to give you a new piece of paper. Okay. 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 are coming true. Oh my shares. Oh my my shares. shares. Okay. 99. All right. So this is exactly what we were, well, it's mostly what we were just doing without the graph. You're not going to graph anything. We're just going to identify parts of the equation. So we're going to do these together. So remember, we have y equals mx plus b. m is the slope. b is the y-intercept. Okay? The x and the y are the ordered pairs. Like, that's what we would get from the table. But we're not doing the table of values right now. How come everybody just keeps moving up to that corner? Because we're buddies. Do you guys think I don't see you over there? But you've been... Fine, so I've not said anything, but Rylan, there's no way that's a better view for you. Yeah, I can definitely see. Oh my gosh. That's a good view. Okay, number one, what's my slope? Four. Y intercept as an ordered pair? Zero two. Zero two. Is this going to be a positive, negative, zero, or undefined slope? It's going to be positive because this four is positive. And then how would I get to the next point on the graph? What would I do? Rise or fall and then run. So what am I doing? Go, rise, go, rise, four. Rise, uh -huh. four, whatever, one. Run, one. Yeah? Why one? Because remember, there's always that... Four, one equals four. Because there's always that denominator of... If they don't have one, it's a one. Okay. Okay. All right. 
Question two, what's my slope? Negative. Y intercept. Positive or negative? Negative. negative. Because my slope is negative. So that's how those are connected. How would I get to the next point? Fold two over run one. Fold two, run one. Okay, this next one's a little funky. It just is y equals five. I'm going to show you what the graph looks like for y equals five. That tells me every y value is five. So what's my slope of that line? Who remembers Mr. Slope Face? The mouth? Yeah, undefined. The mouth? Zero. Zero. Has had the zeros on the end, remember? Okay. What's my y-intercept? Zero, zero. Zero, five. My slope is zero. And then how do I get to the next line? Well, it's horizontal. So I'm just going to keep adding points next to it horizontally. Um, I guess I could. Yeah, that's a good question. All right. So this is the line for x equals 2. Every x value is 2. So what's my slope? The nose of the guy. Two. Undefined. Remember he falls off the cliff? Undefined? You can't say that whole word Wait. that's called a lost Wait a minute. Let's put a mark there. There's not really a slope because it's undefined. Then why is it the other one? How is it undefined? I don't understand. So, if you only have, because one of them is horizontal and one of them is vertical, right? Oh. This is zero. So if it goes up and down, it's unidentified or unidentified. Undefined. Yeah. Like the oh, nose. Wait, it says X. Wait. Oh, 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 oh. Because it says X and Y. I thought it just said X and X. So yep. Y and y. So I don't have a Y intercept. Because this line will never cross the Y axis. It's just not going to. Not, not happening. And then to the next point, I'm just going to write vertical. Or, as Gianna pointed out, you could put rise one or fall one. I mean, you could put, because it goes vertically, right? Okay, we're going to do a couple more, and then you're going to work on it by yourself or with your elbow buddy or wherever you've decided to yeah. move in the classroom. Okay. This does not have a y-intercept. That tells me my y-intercept is zero. If it doesn't give one, that means that it goes through the origin. Okay. So it's zero. So that's the y-intercept. The slope I still have. What's my slope? Negative six. Negative six. Positive or negative? Negative. And then how would I get to the next point? Uh, fall, six, five, Great. All right, we'll do number six as well. What's my slope? What's my y intercept? Positive or negative slope? The one fourth is positive, right? How am I going to get to my next point? Run one fourth. Run one fourth. Hmm? Remember, rise. it's going to be rise one, run four. I'm going to go up one, right four. So the numerator tells me how far to go, rise or fall. Denominator tells me my run value. Okay, so each of these, if you get to a problem that looks like that, like y equals negative 9, go back to the y equals 5, and that will give you an idea of what, what your answers should kind of look like. When we're doing the rest of the yep, so you're just going to work on this until the end of class.